Transfer Records Serum is one of the more popular plugins for electronic music production. Based on wavetable synthesis, it can have a very digital sound to it, but it also has a lot of refined oscillators that can give it nice analog modeling sounds. It's been in development for quite some time and recently added MPE sometime in the last year or so. So I was pretty excited to check it out and see how we can apply some of the gestures of the Sensil Morph and MPE to the uh, Serum parameters. When you first open Serum, and here I'm hosting it in uh, Apple Logic, you want to make sure that it is in an MPE mode. And that's done in the menu here, and you simply check MPE enabled. And if you want to make sure that it's always enabled whenever you use it, you can go to the global tab and click MPE enabled by default. Uh, now back in the synthesizer view, we can see our two oscillators. Um, I've got them in wavetable view. You can switch uh, just by clicking on the bottom of the image. And these nicely animate when you play. Um, now, usually wavetables incorporate a lot of LFOs to sort of keep a, an interesting and constantly moving timbre. But with MPE, we can sort of make our fingers the LFOs. So... Let's see how we can do that. I'm going to reset this back to its original sound. And I'm going to go to the effects and kill that reverb because it sounds cool, but is a bit distracting right now. So uh, back to the oscillator section and we can see we've got our oscillators and our filter up at top. And then down at the bottom, we have our modulators. But this is kind of similar to Arturia pigments. Uh, Pigments was probably quite influenced by this type of view. Um, so let's take a look at our menu and we can see it has some other switches for MPE. You can automatically map the X, Y, and Z to our macros over here. So macros are over in the lower left here. And once you enable that, you'll be able to immediately control modulators or macros one, two, and three with the uh, gestures X, Y, and Z. Now, uh, you probably want to put these things sort of in a, a center place. Um, actually, the timbre, you want to have it bottomed out. And you can hear how that's controlling the uh, timbre, and that's mapped to uh, a couple different parameters. Once we mouse over it, we get the tool tips that tell us it's in the wavetable position for A and the volume for B. So if we go back to our sweep view, we can see how we're moving through the wavetable there. Um, and then we also have a low pass filter that's being controlled by pressure. Now these don't animate, unfortunately, but it's great because there's lots of different views on how to see what's applied, uh, what's modulating what parameter in Serum. So if we go to the matrix view, we can find our macros and see where those are headed. So macro one is going to the warp on A, um, and that's for X. Now to notice that's doing pitch bend and not actually doing the warp, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, macro two, we can get, see that's going to the wavetable, and we can see the animation here, which is really nice, um, that shows how our modulation is affecting that parameter and what range. And we can use these sliders to sort of increase how much of that it's doing. Um, and similarly for pressure, we can see that animated on macro three and I'm just pressing up and down uh, and rapidly oscillating that little animation. Furthermore, you can apply curves to these, um, sort of give more detail on the upper ranges of pressure. So maybe with lower, lower values, it's not going to change the parameter as much. Um, Similarly, you can bring it down on a curve like that. That's a really nice feature because a lot of times, you know, you kind of have a feeling of how you want it to play. Um, and using just a strictly linear map doesn't give you what you want always. So let's take a look at how we can uh, use our own mappings within Serum. This is using the automated XYZ. Let's turn that off. Uh, there's a few different ways to apply our gestures to different parameters. So for example, we can go to um, filter and I'm gonna just remove all the modulators 
And now we can apply the pressure just by going to a modulation source. And I'm, I'm right clicking with the mouse to get this menu, of course. Uh, and I'll select MP MPEY. And now we have a nice animation when we directly apply that modulator. Um, so you can see that there's the little blue indicator on the ring here. And you can also see, of course, the uh, modulation of the filter by the filter graph. If I use, uh, say, pressure on the drive, uh, we could use that. And that's, of course, just going to animate our uh, blue indicator around the ring here. Of course, it's polyphonic, so we can do this individually to different notes. Now, there's the question of the X. As I said previously, we're sending pitch bend, and when we send the pitch bend, we're just being able to control those polyphonically, but we're not able to apply that pitch bend to a parameter. As you can see, modulation sources are, uh, do not, well, I guess we could use pitch bend here, but it's not gonna do it polyphonically. Um, what we want to do is send the pan parameter. So you can see uh, when we go to the matrix view, if we select MP's, MPEX, it says pan in parentheses, and that kind of gives us a clue. Um, MIDI pan is controller 10. So the cool thing about the morph is we can uh, reconfigure it this way. And since we're using the Bukla Thunder overlay, we can uh, use the preset bar and the program is bar to select pre different presets. So let's take a look at the Sensel app and see how we can make that change quickly. Um, of course, I've already done it like any good cooking show, but to take a look at what we do, uh, we'll select our current, um, current overlay and we have set one up here at the top. And this is just sort of a standard MPE configuration. You can see each slider is sending MPE, meaning it uses the channel rotation. And uh, X is going on pitch bend, Y is CC74, and pressure is channel after touch, all according to the MIDI standard. Now, what we can do is just select all, uh, Command or Control A, and Command or Control C to copy it, and go over to another preset in the thunder and then select all and then paste as you normally would. And that gives us a copy of preset one on preset eight. Now, what we can do now is reprogram them and we don't have to do each individual one. We can just select all and then use command click or control click on windows and click off the ones that we are not going to change. And then we can just select X and make that CC10 instead of pitch bend. And then once we've done that, we wanna send the map to morph. Um, but before I do that, I wanna cover a couple other things. There's some interesting settings that we can do with um, absolute versus relative. So on these sliders, these are sending uh, relative values. So whenever I put a uh, finger down, it doesn't matter where I land, if in the center or on the edge, same thing would happen on here. Um, and uh, when I move it, I can slide out of the area and get to, you know, higher values or lower values of that CC. Now in this one, I have, this is absolute. So you can see uh, absolute X is checked for this particular one. And so this is sending CC value zero and up here is 127. And it's all within the range of the control. And if I tap here, it's always going to, it's always going to send 127 and over here it's going to be, you know, around zero. And I set these up um, similarly. So these are absolute X. So we can experiment with how that works. Um, and now that map is on the morph, we want to go uh, back to logic. And I'll hold the programmer's bar and make sure that preset 8 is selected. Now that we have preset 8, I can uh, use MPEX to control something, for example, oh, um, oscillator B pan.
um, and add some amount to that. And if you're listening on headphones, you'll hear that panning left and right. And you can see when I tap on the left, the animation uh, showing the value is over on the left and it climbs as I move over. Now over here, these are relative. So they always start in the center, wherever I, wherever I tap. And then I can move it accordingly. So it's kind of a personal preference of how you would want that to work. Um, so that's how you get the X value as a sort of modifier for your uh, parameters polyphonically. And now if I went to MPE enabled and had X enabled here, that was going to control whatever's going here, which its destination is uh, let's mask, uh, on a warp. I'm going to set that offset to the center so so I get a better uh, experience with the relative. And if I add some hold to these, we'll get actually a better uh, example. So we have a longer throw with these relatives than we do with the absolute. But you get kind of a ex different experience, sort of like with a guitar, where you can do things in a small area. And you can really get expressive. So that's kind of just the overview of how you can apply MPE to parameters in Serum and how you set it up. Uh, of course, this synthesizer is much deeper than what I've gone through, uh, but it's nice that you can you know, find out how things are uh, modulated. You can mouse over the rings and see where things are assigned on parameters. Uh, and you can go to modulators and find out how those are applied to different parameters. Similarly, the matrix gives you a nice overview and animation of all the incoming modulators, particularly from MPE. So I think there's a lot of room to explore here and hope you people come up with some great patches that work with MPE and uh, transfer record serum.